Welcome everyone, in this video we will take a look at the Flutter package called Sequence Animation. So what this does, it combines a series of animations into one single animatable object. So for example, to the right you can see that the square is growing in size and changing color at the same time. So at the Flutter documentation, they refer to this as something that is called a staggered animation. And they define the basic structure of a staggered animation as follows that all of the animations are driven by the same animation controller. Regardless of how long the animation lasts in real time, the controller's values must be between zero and one inclusive. So what this means is if the animation has a length of, for example, 20 seconds, the controller will only provide you the percentage that the animation has completed. Next, the animation has an interval between zero and one. And for each property that animates in an interval, you need to create a tween. The tween produces an animation object that is managed by the controller. So if we scroll up and look at this example, you can see there are multiple things happening within the same animation controller. And here they provide a timeline of what is happening. So all of these would be different animation objects with different tweens and we would need to specify the interval during the animation controller to animate the different properties. For example, the opacity, the width and the height. So if we scroll down, you can see we have a tween double and it animates between the interval 0 0.125 to 0 0.25. And we would need to create these tweens for each of the properties that we want to control. This is fine for simple animations, but as the complexity grows, it can get a bit complicated to keep track of the intervals. So what this package does, instead of creating multiple animation objects, it creates one object called sequence animation. And to this object, we can add multiple animatables. And for each of these animatables, we specify the duration and we specify the tween that gets changed. So that is what we will be looking at in this video. Okay, so we will begin by creating a skeleton. We will call this sequence example. We can remove the app bar. And we can provide a text child just to test that everything is working. Next, we will add the Flutter sequence animation dependency. Hit save and update the packages. Then import that package. We will call init state. We can create a animation controller and call it controller. Then we will extend the class to include the single ticker provider state mixin. Next, we can initialize our controller. All we need to pass in is the vsync. We will hit save. And while the application is loading, we will also create a sequence animation. The sequence animation we got from the package that we imported. We will initialize the sequence animation. We will add a animatable. This can be seen as a individual animation object. We will specify a color tween animation and the beginning color would be red and the end color green. Then we will call dot animate and we will give it the controller. Within the animatable, we can specify the duration. So we will say from zero seconds to two seconds. Next, we will provide a tag of color. This is how we will access the animatable. So we will replace the child to an animated builder. We will give the controller as the animation. And within the builder, we will return a container. We will initialize the height to be 200 and the width to be 200 and give it a color of red. Hit save. And we would need to do a hot restart because of the init state. And there we go. Okay, so this is our example container. Next, we will provide the animated colors. So to get that, we will say sequence animation and we will specify the tag to be color and we will say dot value. This is not working because we would need to 
forward D controller, we would need to start the animation controller. So if we do a hot restart, you can see it animates from red to green. So next we can add a couple of additional animatables to change the colors for different durations and for different time intervals. Hit save. And now you can see it goes from red to green to yellow. And it's very easy to add additional animatables. Next we will provide a box decoration. Remove the color and provide the color within the box decoration. Let's add a circular border radius to our container. We will animate this in a little bit. We will add another color animatable. And then next we will add a new animatable, but this time instead of a color tween, it will be a normal tween to interpolate between double values. The beginning value we will set to be 100 and the end to 300. From 0 seconds to 3 seconds. And now we will specify a different tag and we will set that equal to size. And for the height we will specify the size tag and get the value of the double tween. We will need to do a hot restart. And now you can see it is also animating the size and the color at the same time because the duration overlaps. We will change the size to animate both the X and the Y for different beginning and end values and for different durations. Then we will provide those tags for the relevant height and width parameters. And now you can see it, it's a slightly different animation. So what is important to note here is that the durations do not overlap. So for example, you cannot have animatables that have the same tag and overlapping durations. So the second animation would need to start only after the first animation is done for the same tag property. And last, we will animate the border radius tween. We will say it would begin at a border radius circular of zero and end with a radius of 100. Specify the from and the to. and provide a tag of radius. Then we will provide the sequence animation instead of a fixed circular radius. Do a hot restart. And there we go, now you can see it is also animating the radius. So one thing to note is that we do not need to specify the duration in the controller. This is controlled within the sequence animation where we specify the durations. Next, it is also important, as I said, not to do a time overlap of the different animations that contain the same tag. So here you can see when animating the same property, you need to A, have them not overlap and B, have them in an ordered fashion. So we would need to put the duration in order. So for example, we cannot have a color tag that starts at three seconds and ends at five, and then the next animatable to start before three seconds or to start before the first animatable object starts. But for different tags, it doesn't matter where we put them. If we change this radius tags position to the middle, then that is still fine. Those rules that we read only applies for the animations with the same tag. And yeah, that is that a quick and easy way to do sequence animations or staggered animations. It is a pretty useful package. 
especially if you are going to be doing time sensitive animations or animations that would require a lot of change over time. Yeah, I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you in the next video.